Hello, thank you for joining us. Uh, we're really excited that you're here to get a free GitOps workshop. Uh, my name is Tamo Nakahara and I run the developer experience team here at WeaveWorks. So I'm just checking in on the uh, chat there. Uh, let us know if this is your first time like trying out any kind of GitOps tool. Uh, hopefully you've brought your laptops and you're ready to roll up your sleeves uh, to actually go through the steps. So this is, we will go as slowly as is necessary to make sure everybody can follow along and doesn't get stuck. So I hope you, hopefully you're here for that. All right, doing a shared monitor thing. So hopefully I can get my slide to move forward. Oh, here we go. Um, so thanks for joining. If you've never um, heard of WeaveWorks before, uh, this is the company we work for. Uh, if you have heard of us, you might have heard uh, about the various open source products that we've had. Um, we've definitely been founded on open source. Uh, the project itself that really kicked off the term GitOps was Flux. Um, and we also have a project uh, uh, flagger that does progressive delivery that now has become part of uh, that project. And uh, both Flux and Flagger are in the CNCF been in incubation and we're very, very close to going into graduation. So that is very, very exciting. Um, we've got also many others uh, we've met. Uh, Cortex is another project that's in the CNCF. So uh, we're very excited now to be sharing with you um, a new, a fairly new project that we've had that is open source um, and that will kind of build upon Flux in a way that's uh, fairly streamlined uh, so that if you're the right audience for it, hopefully you'll find it uh, helpful to get started. So yesterday, if uh, you didn't catch our GitOps one-stop shop event, uh, you can still register at uh, gitopsdays.com, uh, where what's really important is that we showcased um, how so many companies, Amazon, Microsoft, Red Hat, VMware, D2IQ, and us um, have built our GitOps uh, products on this open source uh, Flux project. Uh, so you can still see all the recordings if you go to gitopsdays.com. Uh, and I think, uh, you know, you'll be able to see, like, if you're already using Azure, you might think, oh, maybe that's the way that I'll get started. Or um, if you want to look at our solution, uh, that, you know, you'll see the good demos there. And hopefully it'll shrink down your time to shopping for uh, GitOps uh, between uh, months down to, it was down to, I think, about uh, three hours of uh, various uh, vendor showcases with really, really great demos and, and use cases. So a little bit of housekeeping today. Uh, again, I mentioned my name is Tama Onakahara. I'm head of developer experience here at Weaveworks. And I'm very glad to be paired here with David Harris, who is our um, PM for this Give, Weave GitOps uh, product, uh, which again is open source. And we'll walk you through the steps. So um, we will share these uh, docs with you as we move forward. But with that, I will get out of this mode and get into this other mode. Oops, is everybody seeing my notes? I think they're seeing my notes now, right? When I swap displays, is that working? There you go, perfect. Okay, great. Um, all right, so before we shift into the workshop component, um, does anybody have any questions? And if so, you can also um, ask them in our uh, Zoom chat. Uh, but here, so now the format will be that uh, uh, I'll speak for just a few minutes to sort of, if it were a cooking show, sort of give you the vision, and this is like the cooked meal, the GitOps all amazing and shiny, uh, so that as David walks you to the, through the very specific steps to get you started, um, you know, you might be like, wait, I lost the vision. Why am I doing all these steps? You know, this, this will be the thing that you kind of remember, and this is like the end goal of awesome GitOps that you want to experience. So uh, I introduced the company Weaveworks that we work for. Oops, let me shift over here so I can see my notes. Uncovering the Zoom aspects here. Uh, so I covered how we're the company Weaveworks. So in the context of our product, um, we, uh, whether it's our open source or our products, we are dedicated to helping you transition to fully cloud native, if that's the journey that you're on. And so we've built this uh, Weave GitOps product to be 
within line of that goal. And we are very obsessed with making sure that we deliver value to you, the customer, regardless of what flavor of Kubernetes you're using. So it might be on-prem or any of the cloud vendors. Um, we've designed this um, product, we've GitOps, to work with um, that along uh, any part of that spectrum. Um, and we didn't just coin the term GitOps, but we are definitely um, leaders in the space. And hopefully if you watched our um, GitOps one-stop shop event yesterday, uh, hopefully you'll be convinced of that as well. So I'll mention over and over the really importance about um, IT velocity. Uh, you've, if you've seen any of our previous GitOps days events, uh, we've talked about the Dora metrics and how it's really this external study on clear correlation between uh, companies that have been very successful in terms of revenue or time to IPO and all that. So much of that has been attributed to their ability to have great velocity, to be able to deliver their software as quickly as possible and to have the systems in place to do that. So GitOps itself and the way we've designed we've GitOps is really, really designed for that. Like we really wanna make sure that our product helps you to reduce the number of failed deploys that you may have, um, lower the opportunity operational incidents. Um, of course, with GitOps itself, the core part is being able to troubleshoot quickly and roll back quickly if there are any issues. So generally lowering the mean time to recovery. Um, and then just general deployment frequency is really important, right? That's part of um, uh, improving your velocity. And finally, just on the like core level, right? Having something that's robust and reliable so that when you're making changes in production, you can um, take get the benefit of Weave GitOps. So GitOps is really based on helping you succeed with your, both your business goals and how your teams are able to, to operate and collaborate together. So with that, uh, our Weave GitOps uh, product, we wanted to make sure that we built a platform that was both Kubernetes native and Flux native. Uh, and we've talked about this um, project Flux that really kicked off GitOps. Um, it is in the CNCF and you know, we truly believe that it is the most powerful GitOps tool that's out there in the ecosystem. Again, yesterday's event, the uh, GitOps one-stop shop event, it was just very validating and exciting to see these companies um, saying that they trust Flux to provide GitOps to their enterprise customers. So this is Amazon, D2IQ, Microsoft, Red Hat, VMware. They're all saying that we want to provide GitOps to our enterprise customer. And it's been very clear why the Flux project is something that we can rely on that has great security. So we also have built our product on uh, Flux for those reasons. Um, but we do think it's important that, um, you know, there's a, a group of people who want to go use direct flux in, in the open source. And there's definitely a large sea of people who want uh, something that out of the box both takes advantage of all of flux's features, but also it might be more opinionated and maybe might abstract out a lot of steps or stuff that you might have particular teams that don't really need to see that and want to get straight to GitOps. So we've designed we've GitOps for that. And I think it's really important that um, it's not that you use one or the other, that you know, we have customers who have different types of clusters run by different teams with different use cases and needs. And so we really think that there's a clear world where you know, some clusters might use Flux, others might use Weave GitOps, um, and we're definitely designing the product so that if you needed to flip the switch between one or the other, that we're making sure that, that our roadmap is set up so that you can easily do that so you're not choosing just one or the other, but being able to fluidly move between uh, the various choices. Um, a reminder also that Weave GitOps is built for both app and cluster op teams, uh, not just one or the other. Um, and we are really designing to be a total product so that you can do deploy, connect to your CI, workflows, observability, et cetera, so that you can have a clear understanding of what's happening in your cluster at all times and being able to troubleshoot quickly. Um, so we have uh, two flavors. Uh, we've GitOps Core is what we'll do the workshop on today. That's the open source and free, quick, easy startup version. Um, and then as you go toward enterprise, you'll have these uh, added on capabilities. So if you see the GitOps maturity model, you know, wherever you are on this, you know, you might be at the bottom just getting started and GitOpsing a single app to maybe going toward the tops where you need like, uh, add, you need to add policy, you have multi-tenancy, um, have complex management of larger GitOps deployments. Uh, the point is that it is a journey. 
um, and we are very committed to making sure that we get you through that journey um, as smoothly as possible. Uh, so again, a reiteration on the importance of the velocity uh, that you need to be successful. So we've GetUps is designed to give you resilience, automation, continuous app deployment, um, and decreased mean time to recovery. Um, so that helps with you um, making the most of your hardware investments uh, so that you're um, being able to use them the best way possible. And I think really importantly, as we've heard many speakers talk about, um, it helps with retention because you're being able to focus your team on innovating, on learning, on um, adding value versus being stuck in manual and repeated uh, tasks that are demotivating and can add, often lead to errors anyway. Uh, so again, we'll go through Weave GitOps Core which is open source and something you can get started with easily. And I'm really excited today that I think this is the first of the workshops that we're doing that will show the, uh, the new UI that we've been working on. Um, but again, to show you the end cooked product, uh, the, the end turkey dinner, uh, we just wanna make sure that this is just the beginning and that hopefully this will start your GitOps journey in which you'll be thinking about GitOps across dev and platform teams. Um, you'll be scaling GitOps usage throughout your org. Um, you might be thinking about multi-tenancy to avoid operators deploying over each other. You'll be thinking about cluster management for large fleets and clusters with GitOps. Um, and you'll be thinking about um, perhaps um, something like Weave GitOps that you can be doing GitOps in an opinionated way. Um, so finally to close, our company Weaveworks um, is providing this product to you, but in our commitment to your path to cloud native, of course, we also have um, support options so that if you want um, more attention to make sure that everything goes smoothly, we've got very experienced um, engineers here who can help you get you on your journey. So hopefully that's a vision for you and you're excited about GitOps and uh, we will get started with the open source Weave GitOps product. So thank you for joining. And uh, with that, I will hand it over to David. Thank you very much. And thanks everyone for joining. Uh, if there are any problems hearing me, I'm in a very empty room, so it might be a bit echoey. I apologize for that, um, but mention in the chat and I will try to shout a little bit louder. And if you hear my son screaming in the background, no, he is being seen to. He is just very hungry at the moment. <laughs> I think people heard my cat yelling in the background. <laughs> uh, and one thing I will just really iterate here or just mention very strongly is um, we want to make sure that everybody can follow along. So I will be checking in over and over and over. Like, please do not be shy. If you are stuck, um, we are here to help you. There's no bad way to get errors. We are here to help you with those errors. So um, please don't be shy about letting us know. Um, there are some things that you have to install and get started with um, where we've seen people who, if they didn't have them, it went pretty smoothly. Um, so we are happy to wait. We've got a whole two hour block here. Um, and so we will get through it. Yep. Um, so as I say, just put any questions that you have in the chat and we'll try and deal with them. We will take uh, our time as we go through this. It would really help me know personally if you could let us know which operating system you're using. Uh, that helps us prioritize um, some work that we're debating at the moment. Um, you can probably guess which when this guide says that we currently support Mac and Linux. Uh, so to start with, there are a few prerequisites. You will need a GitHub account. You will need kubectl installed. Uh, you will need access to a Kubernetes cluster. We are going to use Kind uh, for this demo. You can bring your own. Uh, if you do wish to do so, again, let us know what you're using. That will help us uh, help you if anything does go wrong. Just be very interesting if it does. But everything should just work, he says with a smile. Uh, and Kind is built on Docker or uses Docker. So you will need Docker installed as well. Uh, any concerns with those prerequisites? Let us know in the chat, otherwise we will start to move on. I think we've often had people who did not have those prerequisites, so let us yeah. know, especially the kind uh, section uh, that went quite quickly. So even if you haven't met that prerequisites, it's not a problem. We can get through those steps. Um, yeah. In fact, um, do you want to maybe show uh, I think we've showed it in the past and it was useful. And also, uh, you said GitHub, right? Not everybody has a GitHub account. So 
Um, anybody need a few minutes to get a GitHub account? Okay, Miniki was fine. Yeah, um, Minikube's fun one because I tend to do, if I'm doing like a multi-cluster demo, then I often do Kind and Minikube running on my laptop and then everything bursts into flame. Um, but it does work, you can do it. So right. I have already created a cluster okay. uh, just because if I'm sharing my screen, I've noticed sometimes this takes a little bit of time. Um, but once you have got Kind installed, Start the cluster. Yeah. Actually, do you mind if we do you mind if we start with setting up kind, or can you set it up somewhere else? Because I know we've always had at least a couple people who have not started with kind. Or um, anybody wants. We can to wait. Please, Please raise your hand if you're through the yeah. installation guide for the CLI itself as yeah, well. That'd, that'd be great. I think we usually have at least a few people who have not. Raise so your hand. not got a, a Kubernetes cluster that they can use. Yeah, raise your hand if you don't have a Kubernetes cluster. All right. We'll assume we're good. Um, seeing Kingdom's answering a couple of questions. We've got Adam saying you're using check marks. Anybody else with check marks? Don't be shy. We're here to help you. Let us know in the chat. Um, like I said, we've usually had like one person who has to start a GitHub account. We've had a good handful of people who need to set up kind. Um, looking through what people are sharing. Anyone else? Okay, Adam, you're good. You got your check marks. All right, Adam is starting a kind cluster. Anyone else starting a kind cluster? Well, especially if Adam's starting a kind cluster, we should make sure that that cluster is created. We can still the CLI in parallel though as well. Most we're just waiting for the clusters to come up. Yeah. So to do that, I've put a link in the in the chat as well. But it's the first link that you'll get from the getting started guide that we're following. Um, takes you to our install page. And zoom gets in the way, bring this down. Now it's just a simple curl command, which you can copy and paste into the terminal. Uh, this will download the binary. Uh, well, let's do it. I'm currently running a release candidate, so this stops me from cheating. There we go. And I've changed my mind. David, there's a question from Oliver in the chat. Can I go CD and weave GitOps? 
coexist or do they need separate namespace? I don't know the answer to that. There we are, the power of community. Cool. So folks give us a thumbs up. We've got the CLI, see Adam has, Kim Dinano has. Do feel free to speak up if you just need a little bit more time, but otherwise we will continue. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to install the GitOps runtime on Kubernetes. So this is basically the GitOps toolkit uh, we install into the Wego system namespace. Uh, please let us know if you currently have Flux installed on your cluster, because uh, this will currently fail. Um, but we currently have our roadmap to make this a lot easier and more additive. Um, because there is there's no real reason why we can't do this. Let's clear my screen. Oh. Yep. So you run GitOps install. That will take your current cube context and install weave GitOps core. Question in the chat, if I run GitOps install, will Flux be installed as well? Essentially, yes, uh, because we are built on top of Flux. Um, if you install Flux manually, then that will default to the Flux system namespace, whereas we go into the WeGo system namespace. So there are, there are some subtle differences. But as I say, we are built on top of Flux. Yeah, got something coming up. So when it's completed, you'll see this install finished message. It'll take a couple of minutes. Any folks need time on the install? Awesome. So next thing I'm going to do is to fork uh, a sample application. So this is based on PodInfo, which if you've seen we've worked demo before, it's, it's one of our favorites written by Stefan. Um, we're using a specific uh, example, which is just the deployment manifest. So you can kind of think of what we are helping you to do is once you've already got a deployment manifest for your application, how do you then insert that into a best practice GitOps pipeline? So this is the repo, which I will put in the chat. So you can go here, fork it. I already have a fork. So the things that you're, so there's a question in the chat. Uh, regarding what's actually deployed. So all of those controllers, they are what make up the GitOps toolkit, which is basically what Flux is. And let's try Docker. So if you did a Flux install, uh, this is the same thing that you would see uh, in the Flux system namespace. Hope that makes sense. Yep. 
Cool. So once you've got uh, your forked repository, grab uh, the SSH URL to clone it. It's not creating a new folder. This already exists because I've done this before. So let's go. And you can see the into the directory which you're there. So this is a fairly simple uh, application it consists of a front end and a back end. Let us know if anyone needs more time on the clone or needs any help. We have had um, folks who haven't had SSH keys as well, so sometimes this can take a little while. You do just say if you get stuck, and we'll be happy to help. Was this the one that was a little sticky where you had to do the fork and the clone in a particular order and you had to do both? Am I getting um, So some people, some people just clone and then when they when they try and do an app ad because we're writing uh, to git or we're writing everything back to git you need write access on that repository so if you've cloned um, our repo before forking it then you don't have write access to it so it doesn't work yeah yeah and thanks for stacy for mentioning that so i wanted to call it out so we did both fork and clone you yeah. know sometimes people skim through the instructions oh including me I'm terrible for doing that. And and this is uh, this is in particular for this example use case that we're going through. This is where we're saying, hey, I already have uh, a clone of the repo or the application I want to deploy. So by adding that dot with the GitOps app add dot, it just says I have the clone. Let me use it. If you don't have the clone locally, you can pass a URL to app add, and it will do all of the work remotely on the on the repo for you so you don't have to do the clone first you still have to do the fork yeah no thank you for clarifying that mark also in the demo will it's not in the getting started guide but i'm going to show you how you do this in the web ui as well um, which obviously isn't using a local uh, clone of the repo we will just be effectively passing in that url So this is where we are going to split into two different workflows. You can do one or you can do either. Um, if you want to run the new web UI, then the command for it is GitOps UI run. And I'll stick that in the chat as well. Just letting people know if they wondered. <laughs> Mark Emice is one of our principal engineers who just hopped into chat there and yes, has the Game of Thrones little <laughs> image. So the UI currently runs uh, locally on your laptop. Uh, one of the things that we will be doing in the future is running it on the cluster. Uh, but for now, it will open a blocking web server in the terminal, which is why I'm opening a new one. So as I say, I'll, I'll go through the instructions on if you want to do either. Um, the getting started guide will walk you through using the CLI. So what we are going to do is we are going to create an application and this will set up the, the relationship between the cluster and your source in Git. So that we will start to be able to reconcile between the two. Um, the way we do this is through a GitOps add app 
or app add, I should say. That's another thing we will be changing. We're going to switch to verb noun to be more like kubectl and kind. Uh, but for now, do GitOps app add, and then from within the root directory for this uh, Git repository, you can just do dot. So Kingdom, the, the bug that you are seeing is a result of the uh, container image not having a V beforehand. Um, this is fixed in the subsequent release, which will probably be later today, uh, if not or tomorrow. Uh, it's not actually going to stop you from doing anything. Uh, it's just kind of, it looks a bit odd if you go through um, and get all the pods in the Wego system namespace, but yeah, looks, looks ugly, is fixed, but isn't something to worry about for now. So, so what I'm doing with add uh, is just taking this root directory uh, for my application. As Mark said, you can either pass a URL. Sorry, this would be a bit messy because I've made it so small. And that can be the path to your repository like there. So if we go back. It's determined I'm to spend time with my family. So you can see in the output, I'm going to make this a little bigger. What we have done is we have created a pull request in that repo. So everything that we do, we try and do through pull requests so that you get the benefits of peer review because we found that 80% of issues happen as a result of human error and being able to enforce um, a peer review process catches so many bugs before they end up in production. We can take a quick look and then I'll swap to showing how this would be done through the web UI and you'll get the same, uh, the same PR being generated. We create three files in a .wego directory. So we're creating an app called podinfo, which is taking the repo name as default. Uh, we are creating a customize and a source. So if you're familiar with Flux, um, this is telling us where the Git repo is and then how we are going to build uh, the application to deploy it. Uh, you can review the changes, you can merge them. I'm going to delete it because I'm going to show it through the UI as well. And I'm going to delete the branch. So going back to the web UI, the way that you would do this is click add application. Uh, give your application a name. Um, uh, yes. So Adam, um, there's a couple of things that you can do here. Um, we can create a personal access token, which avoids you having to go through the device flow. And that's usually a lot simpler if you want to do multiple operations, but we have got it so that even if we don't have a personal access token, we can authenticate with Git. So what you will see in this case, in fact, if you like, I can quickly jump in and show what would happen by removing my personal access token. It shouldn't have an access token. I'll just check in a different private window. Yep, nothing. So So 
So basically, if you don't have a personal access token, we go through the device flow, same as the GitHub CLI. If you go to the URL specified, copy in the code, continue, then we basically just need repo access so that we can push uh, deploy keys, authorize, and to your password. So again, I'm just going to take this over here. Then once that completes, you should see the update in your terminal. Hey, David, uh, I have a, a comment from Oliver in chat. It says, unable to connect to the server, X509 certificate signed by unknown authority. So what step were you trying to execute there, Oliver? Ah. <laughs> Glad you got it working. And uh, Adam is also saying, got it. Awesome. So again, just because I created that and I wanted to show through the web UI, I'm just going to quickly do this other PR. Go back. Um, so yes, give it a name. You can override the namespace where we're going to install the, the GitOps automation objects, so the source and the customization. but I recommend just leaving it as the default, which is where the GitHub runtime is installed. Uh, the source repo, I'm just going to grab and get rid of all the stuff. Actually, point at my repo. Config repo, this is if you want to use um, an external GitOps repo, uh, we can push the automation objects there so you can keep your uh, application source deployments in one repo and you can have the automation in a different repo. Uh, we strongly recommend this for larger scale deployments, but for simplicity of getting things up and running, you don't have to do that. You can just use the source repo and we'll write directly into that. Uh, the path to find your deployment manifests, mine are just in, in root, so give it a slash. Uh, you can do auto merge if you're naughty, um, but we typically say, do it via a PR. You then see the exact same device flow. Oops, I forgot to actually do that. And we'll get a little spinny. And it's telling me that it's created a new PR. I can view my open PRs, same as before. Then if I'm happy, we can merge it. And once you've merged, delete the branch. So now that the automation is in place, you can watch what is happening by doing, where's this going to deploy? I think it goes into test. So kubectl pods dash test. And what should do? There we go. So that's the back end and the front end starting to be created. That's it. So basically within the web UI, you'll start to see what's called a reconciliation graph. So this is everything that's getting laid out on the cluster. Uh, so you can see you've got a horizontal pod autoscaler, got service for the backend and front end. Uh, we've got the deployments, which results in a replica set, which results in a pod. And we've got our automation objects. So we've got our customization, we've got our source, um, we've got our application object. So this is defining uh, pod info and 
In this instance, we've also created the test namespace, which is where we're deploying into. I'll stop that. Uh, you can also view uh, your application status through the CLI. So you can do GitOps app list to see which ones you've got deployed. And you can do GitOps app status, give it a name. <laughs> because I've deleted my personal access token, uh, I need to authenticate. Because one of the things that we do here is we can get a list of commits against a repo so you can see um, which commits have actually been applied. So if I scroll a bit further down, so these are all the all the playing about I've done with my pod info deploy uh, over the past few days. And you can link into specific commits to see what actually happened, which is quite a nice way to, to understand your repo's activity. I can see from the source that this is the specific um, checksum for the commit, uh, which we've recognized being there in Git. And we can see that the same one has been applied to the cluster. So I right. just wanted to take a moment here. Um, I know we kind of started swimming along a little bit, but we want to make sure uh, the goal Sorry, is I tend workshop. To <laughs> The goal of this workshop is make sure everybody's able to follow along and, you know, no shame, no issues. If you're like, oh, I'm actually five steps back <laughs> and coming forward. Uh, um, yeah. So let us know in the chat. It's been great to see the comments there. Um, and see that Adam says, if I edit something via cube cuddle, what is going to happen? Good question. So I would believe that would be detected as drift and it would get, you would basically have another reconciliation to override it, but probably Kingdom or Mark could confirm there. Do you, do you mean edit, edit it directly on the cluster? Because if so, then yes, that will, uh have it cycle back through because then, as you said, David, we're going to detect the drift and uh, revert it. So the idea is that it enforces you to do all of your changes through Git. You can, you can pause your uh, reconciliation. So in Flux, it's the suspend command. I think in GitOps, we use pause, it's far more intuitive. Um, so that will stop any synchronization if you do want to jump in and change things on a cluster, like if you're doing some debug, for example. Um, Anyone else? Um, Kingdom's chatting in the chat. Anyone else, um, even as far back as getting the cluster started, <laughs> getting the forks and clones, um, it's not a problem at all. The goal here is to make sure that people are able to feel like they experience this. So we are very patient and no problem with that. Any other errors people have gotten stuck on? Okay. So what we'll show next is actually making a change right through that process that I just described. So it is actually going through Git, um, but it's always nice to see your change in action. So we can actually view the pod info application that we have deployed. Uh, to do this, we'll need to do a port forward. So go ahead and do that. Then you should be able to view the application at localhost 9898.
once you've got that running, we can make a change so you can see it take effect from GitOps. So we are going to go to the pod and flow application. Going to change something in the front end. So we have an environment variable which is determining the, the color what we are witnessing. Let's pull that out. Maybe not quite that big. That'll do. So front end deployment. That's the color. And we're going to make it a horrible gray. Yeah, because I actually need to edit it. Silly. Commit to main because I'm bad. And then we will basically see in the terminal things start to change. I already see that I've got a new front end container. Starting, and we should start to see the other one going away, and traffic should start to get rooted. To uh, we need to do a new port forward. Which one did I have it on? There we go. And there's my disgusting gray. But the power of GitOps means that this is very easy to get rid of again. So if I go back to my application, I can see the commit history. And So, what have I done? Get up, change that UI. I just lost everything. Oh. 
Great to see people succeeding with the uh, pod info sample app. Ooh. How's everybody else doing? Oliver was stuck partially and now unstuck. Uh, everything going well? Kingdom's also going through the steps. Yeah, we might have had a, a bug. So I'm looking forward to see what we found. Yeah, okay. Excellent. Thanks, Oliver, for the feedback. That's why you should probably do this up here. Right, that's why. Because I didn't do it as a PR, and I don't have to revert through the web UI. So David, are you are you seeing the chat as well? All of this port forward <laughs> info. Oh, it looks fun. Yeah, so what happens when that container goes down, the port forward fails on that. And that's when I think you'll see those issues like that, Adam. Thanks, Mark. So I should have done let's create it as a PR. And if I didn't like it, it would have been a lot easier to revert through the web UI. Well, it's because I was naughty and did it through a commit, so I could only have done it through the CLI. There we go. Makes sense. Learn everything new about GitHub's web UI.
Yeah, so this is basically the end of the demo, but I'm very interested in the port forward chat, so I'm going to have a read of that. <laughs> do let us know anyone else if you've encountered any issues. So looking at the chat, I really appreciate people's engagement. Um, and it looks like you know, it's good to see people getting through and experiencing GitOps. Ooh. With GitOps. It's good. So yes, to remind people of the, the turkey dinner at the end, <laughs> um, hopefully this gives you a taste to, uh, for um, you know, so much more that uh, you'll be able to do regarding multi-tenancy, um, complex cluster management, fleet management, um, all the stuff I talked about in the beginning. So hopefully this is just the beginning. Yeah. And, and come chat to us in Slack, come chat to us in GitHub. As we say, we've GitOps Core is an entirely open source project. Uh, we welcome any and all feedback and any and all contributions. Uh, so thank you everyone for joining us on this journey. Yes. So with that, I will move to our closing slides. And if anybody is uh, feeling less shy in the final minutes and has any questions, um, if David, you want to stop, yeah, okay, thanks. I will continue. Do our just closing slides here. It's far out of the way. So you will get an email that shares uh, these links so that you can continue on if you haven't finished uh, or if you have uh, want to share it with a friend, uh, please do. Uh, again, yes, these are docs and hopefully you saw, uh, Stacy will pa paste again that we have a Slack channel where if you haven't finished, a lot of people um, have been able to finish their work there. And so we're happy to always help and we'll see our team there. Uh, and again, ask your friends if they want to join, um, we can walk them through we do these workshops because some people just say like, oh, I really wanna carve out the time to do it. It's just really hard. So it's great to have a set time. Other people like to kind of work text-based and async. So we try to provide all kinds of options. And with that, yes, thank you so much for joining. And uh, you'll get an email uh, with a follow-up. And if you want to um, have this as a demo shared with your team, or if you wanna see it again, um, definitely reach out to us through the email or in the Slack channel, whatever. We are very happy to uh, do demos for you. We've had a couple of those come after we've done these workshops. So it's really cool to first see individuals go through the process and then um, talk to the teams to see what they're looking for. So thank you.